winner chicken dinner. Who doesn't like a good card game? You versus the dealer, one on one. And in our game, you deal and whoever has the higher card wins, like me, winner. I'm starting with a blank scratch project. Now I'm gonna add 52 card images, but I'm not gonna add them one by one. I'm just gonna take one sprite, go to the costumes, and I'm going to upload 52 images of cards right here the upload costumes here I've downloaded 52 images of cards and I'll give you a link to upload these or I'll give you a scratch starter template okay I'll click open wow it's downloading all of these costumes and check to make sure that we have all 52 cards oh wait a minute I forgot the scratch cat was the first two costumes so I'll need to delete him and then I'll just scroll down, make sure that we have 52 cards. Yes, so the 52nd card is the King of Spades. This Joker, we're not gonna use. So we're only gonna use up to 52. So you can delete these other cards, but I'm gonna actually use them uh, as images in the game. So I'm not going to delete them, but it's up to you. Now I'll need two sets of cards in my game, one for player one and one for player two. So I'll go ahead and duplicate it right here. Now these are gonna be player one's cards. So player one, and these are going to be the dealer's cards. And I'll need to separate these on either side. They're a little bit big, so I'm gonna change the size to 50%. And on this one, 50%. There, that looks better. That this is a good time to add the other sprites I'll need as well. Uh, I'm going to add a button that's going to be called Deal. So here is a blank button. There we go. I'm going to put that where I want it to be, and I'll just write the word Deal on it right now. Deal. There. Does that look great? Yes, it does. And then I'll want to add a backdrop because it's just white, so boring. Let's just use a stock backdrop. Here we go. This one looks good. There. And then we'll need to have a winner. Like it says, you won. Uh, that's going to be a sprite that we're going to paint. And we'll write the words winner. And we'll make them big by selecting it, dragging it so that it's a little larger, change the color. What do we want the color to be? I think green is like a winner color. There we go. And now we're gonna either wanna position it over the player one wins or the dealer wins. So let's get that positioning correct. First, let's go in the backdrop and add those words. Oh, convert it to vector because it's much nicer to write. So we're going to say this is player one, player, or just player, and we want this to be bigger. We'll have that right there. And over here, we'll need to have oops, select it and then unselect it. That'll allow me to write dealer, and then I need to make that bigger. There. Okay, and then let's just line up these cards so they, they fit where I want them to be. Now we want the words winner to go above either the player or the dealer. And you notice I did the wrong color in my opinion. So I'm gonna change this to, isn't vector mode nice? You can just click on things and change their colors. Uh, player, what color do I want player? Player will be purple, that's good. Now the positioning for the winner is going to either be right here or right here. And we'll use the go to code. So let's go ahead and say that when the game starts, that we're going to hide it. Uh, where would we find that? In the looks menu. Here are the looks, here it is. Game starts, we hide you. Goodbye, you are hidden. Okay, but before we hide him, I'm going to position it where I want it to be. So if player one wins, it's gonna go right there. So grab the motion block and say go to that position. We'll use an event and the event's called when I when player one wins, right? So we'll make it the name player wins. Or just, we keep saying player one, but there's only one player here. Player wins, it goes right there, and it will need to show itself. So come in here and click show. Let's see if this works. We start the game, it's hidden. Player one wins, it shows up right there. Now, if player two wins, it's going to show, or the dealer, I keep saying that, it's gonna go right there. Now when I moved it, it automatically updated the motion position. 
So the go to has been updated. So I just need to duplicate this, whoops, 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 and then replace this with this positioning and make a new message that says dealer wins, dealer, dealer wins. Now, anytime dealer wins, it will go there, player wins, there we go. And then uh, you can make it hide when you reset the game. Okay, at this point in the game, we haven't coded the cards to flip and change and to keep score. We haven't done any of that. It just looks like the game is done. I'll show you something also, a big mistake that I've made. When I click on player one, you'll see that it's in the wrong position. I need to flip these. So click on your sprites and make sure they are where they should be. Now we're going to be coding player one first. So select the player one card, click on costumes, and figure out what the starting costume is going to be. For player one, let's make player one red. Yes, so 56. We're gonna be referencing the costume number, like 56, rather than the card name. It's much easier to use the costume number. So we'll jump in here and we'll say, when the game starts, we'll switch to costume number, switch to costume, uh, boy, it's down here. It's actually doesn't have costume numbers on this. So I'll have to just try it. Let's see, is that the, that's the black one. And then the other one is the red one. There we go. And I'll come over and I'll, well, let's just share the code. If you drag over another sprite, it will share that code and we'll make this one the, the Z01. Okay, there we are. We had a good starting position. I'll switch back to player one and I'll say when I receive the message deal, like when you press the deal button, then I'll kind of randomize which costume I'm showing. So I will need an event when I receive, not dealer wins, but deal, or deal cards, new message, we're just gonna call it deal. When I receive deal, change costume. So how are we gonna change it? Probably kind of in a repeat loop. Uh, let's go look in control. Let's grab that repeat 10, which we're gonna change the 10, but for right now, we'll just leave it. And then we'll go to looks, and we'll say switch costume to, and we, we're not gonna, we're gonna use like a randomized number. So we'll need to go into operators and grab pick random. Okay, let's see if there's enough room on here. Now, which number? Okay, we have 52 decks in the card, so between one and 52. That will switch the costume. Now it's only gonna repeat 10 times. So when you kind of like, when you shuffle and deal and all that stuff, it needs to be real random feeling. If you repeat 10 times every time, it's not gonna feel very random. So let's actually repeat this a random amount of time. Okay, let's, where is that? It's in the operators, pick random. We'll pick, uh, let's go between 20 and 50 times. That's a lot, let's, let's test it. Click on the code. Oh, that was quick, there. So it's gonna flip the cards between 20 and 50 times, ending on a random card. That seems to work. Let's go ahead and drag this piece of code onto the dealer card as well, so both of them work. Now when we click the deal button, we want this to deal. So we'll jump over to the deal button's code, and we'll say, when the game starts to show itself, looks, and we'll say show, and we'll use a little event called when this button is clicked or when this sprite is clicked. So in the events, we'll say when sprite is clicked to fire that code. So what is that code? That is an event and we'll go in the events. We'll say broadcast deal and wait. Why are we using the wait? Because we want the cards to finish changing their costumes before the next part of this code happens. Let's try it. It works. Now our game looks like it's done, but it isn't because we haven't actually coded any functionality. The computer doesn't know that this costume has a value of Jack. What is the value of Jack? I would say 11, right? And this costume is number seven. So Jack versus seven, the Jack should win. How are we going to tell the computer 
what the value of the jack is. First, let's create a variable. Well, a couple variables. So I'll be in the variable menu for player one. I'll click make a variable and I will say player one value. Now, on making sure that I'm coding player one right here, after it's done flipping through all those costumes, we're going to have it set the value of that variable, set player one value to whichever costume number it's on. Remember these costumes, they all have a number and we'll call those the value. Uh, you can see that the number seven, well the card seven actually is the value seven. So that works. Well, it works for a little while. Let me just show you how we're gonna fix that problem. First, set player one value to the costume number. That's in looks down here at the bottom, costume number. This should work pretty well. Let's just test it. Player one, there. Wait a minute. Does this card, the two of spades, have a value of 41? No, but it's the costume is 41. The problem here is, is the two of spades more valuable than the two of clubs? No, it should be the same. So we're gonna have to use some pretty complex mathematics, but don't worry, it's super easy. Let's take a quick jump back to think about what a deck of cards is. Let's actually look in the costumes for player one. Are there 52 values? No, there's actually only 13 values. See, the king is the most powerful card. Well, in our game, we're gonna make ace low. So ace is valued at zero right here, or we could just say one, ace is one. And then king has the value of 13. Now, does this card number, you know, the costume number 14, is it have a greater value than card 13? No. In fact, it just repeats itself after 13. So of the 52 cards in a deck, it's really just 13 cards and then 13 and then 13 and then 13. So that number 13 is really important. Let me show you how to use the computer's incredible brain to do complex mathematics. Go ahead and jump into the code area for player one, go to the operators and look for something called mod. Mod is kind of like division. It takes a number, like say 52, and we divide it by another number. Let's say the number 13. Mod says, is there a remainder left over? 52 divided by 13? Nope, no remainder. Now, why is that special? Because the cards are repeating every 13 times, you can actually figure out the value of a card just by using this mod 13. Well, what's what we're not using card number 52 always. Well, yeah, replace that with the costume number. This is a thing of beauty, watch this. Put that in here. So we're setting the player one's value to the mod of whatever costume number is of 13, mod 13. So the, what's the remainder gonna be? That's gonna be the value. Let's see if it works. There's the jack, it has a value of 11. Yes, let's try it again. Five is five, yes it works. Now we can compare cards without having to worry about if it's what suit it is, if it's spades or diamonds. The only problem is, is you'll notice that card number 13 is a king and 13 mod 13 is actually zero. So there is a problem with our code, but let's deal with that later. Now that we are capturing player one's value, let's jump into the dealer card and set up a variable for the dealer. We're gonna say the dealer card value, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna say variable set dealer's value, card value to the mod, where's mod? I lost it, I can't find mod, it's way down here, there it is, to mod 13 of the card's value, I mean the, um, the card's costume number. Where is the costume? Here it is, it's in the looks menu, right here, costume number, there. So now they both should be working. Let's go ahead and put them right there so you can see it. 
and make sure they are working correctly. There, now that we have both of these values working, we can compare them to determine who won or who lost. Now we're on the final stretch because we know the value of player one's card in comparison to the dealer's card. So let's jump back into the deal button. Remember that button? We actually used an event called when the sprite is clicked to broadcast the message deal. But I use the deal and wait. And what that will do is it will wait until all the code that's running this broadcast deal until it runs before it comes back and does anything right here. So we, we said deal. So player one is like, okay, I'm dealing. And then the dealer is like, I'm dealing. So everybody's dealing. They're setting their the card value to this, this uh, costume mod 13. Then we come back to the deal button and we can just set up a comparison. Let's compare player one to, to the dealer. So let's do that. Let's go in the operators and let's say, uh, let's use the less than and greater than and well, which one? We're probably gonna want all three of these, aren't we? We're going to go into variables and say if the dealer card is less than the player card, something's gonna happen. Well, let's just start with that because I don't need to show you all of these scenarios. Let's grab an if statement. If dealer card is less than, whoops, it's hard with scratch three to kind of organize where all the code is. If the dealer card is less than the player card, then who wins? Let's come over here and say player one wins or dealer wins. Good. So player one will win. Let's go to events and let's broadcast player one wins. You can actually use an if else statement. We don't have to code so much. So let's uh, go into control and use if else. And then we'll just say this. If the dealer has less, player one wins. Otherwise, the dealer wins. Let's get rid of this. Attach it right here. That's a nice little if else statement. Let's see if it works. Yes. Now fast forward a bit. I want to show you a situation where there's a bug in the game. Look at this. I got a king. I should be the winner, but the value is zero. And this four beat me. Okay. That's just incorrect. Using the mod uh, function creates a little bit of a problem right here. So how are we going to fix this? Let's go back to the source of the problem and fix it there. Jump back to player one and right here it says set player value one to costume number mod 13. Okay, so this is where it's setting that value to zero. We don't want that. So let's say if in the control, if the player one value, this is actually pretty cool. Go into variables, say if player one's value is equal to zero, then we're going to set player one value to 13. It's like manual override. There we go. So now if, if it just happens that you get a king, then it will convert it to a 13 instead of a zero. Let's go ahead and see if it works. There we go on the first try. Now I know this lesson was a beast. It was huge. We learned so much, but basically you can create any card game by using this mod 13 trick. Blackjack, poker, the world is your oyster. Do people still say that? Anyways, I can't wait to see what you build with these new skills.